Good morning, good morning everybody. This is Middle Earth Readings. My name is Maggie Rose Cunningham. I'm here to help you to set up your spirit-led week working with the runes within the northern tradition. We are working in the waxing moon phase this week. So we have our waxing moon on the, well on the 29th of March we're in the half moon. So we're in the waxing phase. We have the lovely balanced moon on the 29th of March. We're working with six runes. So I'm going to be introducing them to you shortly, but I would love to hear from you. For those of you joining me in the chat, good morning, Suzanne. Good man, morning, Lauren. Um, what your, which rune you're working with, rune or runes you're working with at the moment, and how do you, how do you invite them in to your life? Do you simply, you know, they're there in the ether, you're aware of them, do you have an altar, do you get your rune out of your rune set and have it by your bed in some way? You know, how, do, how do you invite it in? How do you say, yes, be present for me in, in the moment? Do you wear it? Um, do you have a particular time of day when you say hello to it? And how do you connect? How do you connect? How do you invite them in? Morning, Candice. Morning, Michelle. Lovely to see you. So, yes, please share your rune. Suzanne says, I have my altar. Um, the chat box is doing something very, very weird for me this morning. It is showing some of your comments and then they're disappearing again. So wish me luck going through your comments. If I miss you out, I'm really, really sorry. It's literally just sort of flickering in and out. So I hope that you are fine with, with me coming live to you as well. Um, but yeah, how do you work with your rune? How do you invite them in? Is the question. And the theme that we're going to be working on this month, for those of you who are members of um, Sooner Star Will, you know that through the course of this full lunar month, we're working with the overall theme of sovereignty and seership, of bringing together these two parts of ourselves, of perhaps, you know, for some of us, who have very strong um, intuitive, very strong psychic, very strong oracular abilities, raising that sovereign up to meet them so that you have that strength in terms of holding boundaries, taking action, um, <clears throat> making decisions based on the wisdom that you have access to. And for others of us, it might be that we have a strong sovereign, perhaps a protector as well, sort of saying, you know, I keep that spiritual part of me, that intuitive part of me um, hidden know in in some way and say like, how could I bring that out more these are the themes that we're looking at and through this week we are looking at um, instinct and intuition a little bit on intellect as well these sort of three you might call these these three faculties but we're looking particularly at instinct and intuition and we're doing that because we have um, two planetary movements that we're working with through this week that are coming through so soon as chariot is moving tomorrow the sun is moving into the half month of Ewaz. So we've got our Ewaz rune. Let me just get the Ewaz rune for you. This is going to be one of our highlight runes for today. Here's the Ewaz rune. This is the rune of partnership, the rune of the steed, the rune of um, the rider and the steed working together as one. And you can think about this in so many different ways. We can think about it as the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. We can think about this as the intellect and the intuition or the instinct um, we can think about this in terms of partners how we partner with other people it is a um, partner rune very related to the gibo rune they're often considered to be sort of um complementary opposites let's say where gibo is quite rules based it will say you know that's uh, codified how do i when am i in charge when am i not in charge you know i take an oath i i do this it's a formalized spoken uttered um, you might say like, like in the realm of intellect rune. Ewaz is an instinctive, intuitive rune. So it works on all of those times when you're in a partnership and sometimes you're in control, sometimes you're not in control. You're moving backwards and forwards through that, using your multiple forms of intelligence to steer you to know when am I in charge, when am I not in charge, when is it that I want to sit back and either allow another part of me to, to lead or I want to let somebody else lead and then I'm going to know when it's right for me to step forward. So this is a great rune for us to be working with around instinct and intuition. You might think about this in the very classic sense of a human and a horse working together and using their different strengths. A predator animal and a prey animal, a very, very large, very powerful 
prey animal and a very, very small, puny, not large at all, predator animal working together and the way in which they partner with each other to... The, the horse will lead in terms of its instinct, you know, what's what's happening, you know, they're, they're looking to the sides, their eyes are literally pointed in different directions, a very different vision to the human who is looking forwards and saying this way. Very, very different forms of intelligence working together and the Airways ring represents that. So as soon as Chariot is moving to Airways, so anyone who has Airways, that's a great rune for you to be working with. And what you might want to be thinking about now is also, well, how does the rune that I'm working with or the runes that I'm working with, how will they connect with and interface with Airways? Might it be that my runes offer me different forms of wisdom, different forms of power that I want to work with. So I can see Chen, for example, you've got the Ansu's rune. And there are going to be times when you want to be expressing, you know, broadcasting, uttering with your Ansu's rune. And there are going to be times when you want to be receiving, allowing in. And the Ewa's rune helps you to navigate those two pieces of the, of the, uh, of the Ansu's rune, for example. And the same would be true of, um, of other runes as well. So you have a little play with that and think about that. The second planetary movement that we have is Odin's chariot. So Odin is moving out of Ewa's and into Manas. Um, so that is the rune of the, of the divine human. You know, the divine human, the sovereign self. But this is the sovereign who is integrated. Where is my manas? Oh, we're not doing manas today because we did manas last week. So let me just tell you a little bit about manas. I, mean, I think we did it last week. Hmm, we shall see. Anyway, so Odin is moving into manas. So this is his place of sovereignty. Imagine him on um, Hjalaskjalf, on his great throne. He's got Huggin and Mana and his two ravens. They're swooping in, they're speaking to him, and he is integrating all of this knowledge. So the manas rune is a really good rune for saying, the type of sovereignty that we are looking at here is not, you know, I'm in charge, do what I say. It's not like dictatorship, it's not tyranny. It is sovereignty that combines um, leadership and vision with a deep commitment to service. The sovereign as like, wedded to their realm, wedded to the idea, to the vision that they, that they serve. We've been doing a lot of work with this around um, vision, in Vision Quest, the Dream World Retreat that I'm hosting at the moment. We have our last session tonight. Um, so again, this manas energy coming through is very strong. And there I can see Candice there, you've got Issa. This sense of standing in your power is um, amplified through the union between the Issa rune and the manas rune. And there's space to play there in terms of looking at when the Issa rune tells us to stand fully in our power and be like, I'm in the moment. And when it might get into too much rigidity and we might need to bring in a little bit of that movement that, that, that the Ewa's rune offers us. So when these runes come and they play together, we have this space that we can work with. So let's just have a little bit more of a play with um, instinct and intuition. So... If you go and you look up instinct and intuition, you'll find that the descriptions of what the, those two words mean often um, interconnect. They often overlap. It's not always clear what the, de what the definition is of the two. And I think this is important. If we're looking to claim our power as spiritual beings, as instinctive and intuitive, and to bring the sovereign and the seer together, then taking some time to feel into what does it mean for you when you think, I am intuitive or I'm not intuitive, you know, whatever it is that you feel about yourself. And I am instinctive or I'm not instinctive. How do those two um, words land for you? When you think instinct, what do you think? I mean, for me, um, the immediately when I hear instinct, I think instinct for me feels more centered in my body, more like, you know, my heart's pounding and oh, you know, I've got to do the thing. And it's very responsive in the moment, instinct. Whereas intuition can feel to me a little bit more um, higher up in my in my headspace. It's bringing my conscious mind in a little bit more, and it's bringing in my um, relationship with my spirit guides, and it's more expanded outwards. And I can ask my intuition you know, for help, and my intuition might feel into my instinct and go, "Oh, you know, what does that? How does that feel? How does that feel right? Does it feel wrong?" 
and like so I can use my instinct as part of my intuition so it becomes a little bit like a sub category there and and for some people that is the way they see it they see instinct as being like a subcategory of intuition part of intuition but if you look at the etymology of the words and all of these words come from the latin by the way um so i'm going to do a little bit of work just a little bit of unpacking of um soul law for you in the germanic sense that you can get a feel of how we might work with them slightly differently so instinct originally meant um to prick um, to, to prick towards or to have an impulse. You can literally imagine like a stinging of the skin or something prodding you. So it's very um, bodily in the moment. It's sometimes called the animal faculty of intuition. So it's that primal, you know, centered in the body piece. Now in the um, Germanic soul law, we might think about instinct as then operating in um, the like, which is the physical body, the word likeness comes from the like, our physical body, this is where our instinct is held, and within um, the hammer or the hide, which is your energy body, it's like your energy field, um, slightly different to the aura, has a few different other meanings as well if you are interested module in um, the Awaken to the Runes program and we work on with Solar and Adrezzel's Path. But this is just to give you a little bit of a sense of where instinct might operate. Now intuition comes from the word um, to tutor. There's a sort of teaching, receiving, but it means to look at or to consider, to perceive, to have spiritual insight or um, immediate spiritual connection. And so this has this almost idea of like an external intelligence coming through or us as being expanded, that we're not just a brain inside a body, that there is more, we have more awareness. So intuition encompasses a lot more than just instinct. And I always think about this as relating to, for example, our spirit guides, the, your, your fetch or your filia, which is your accompanying spirit, your kin fetch, your family or um, the uh, spirits associated with home and hearth and our businesses, uh, collective groups of people, our deceer circles, you know, our accompanying spirits all operate within this realm for me of um, intuition and they support us in that and the body, our instinct may pick up on what they're saying. You know, so we have our personal spiritual intelligence and then we have a collective spiritual intelligence which might also bring in um, past lives all sorts of other places where we go, I, I don't know how I know this, I just know, you know, and this is what Odin's chariot says, and it says, um, I don't know how I know, I just know, you know, and that's the, that intuition piece that comes through. Now, I just wanted to pick up a little bit on intellect as well, because I mentioned intellect too, and I, for me, I think that that's, um, the realm that we often culture and cultivate, we are encouraged to cultivate our intellects much more than our instincts or our intuitions in the modern schooling system today. And so it can be considered to be, you know, sort of better somehow. I don't really agree with that, but we, we can see it in that way. Now, intellect means to understand. And I think for me, the challenge with intellect is it's considered to be, the other one might be the, as an, un, to understand or the power of knowing, the power of knowledge. And the thing for me about our intellect is that our intellect is inside. It needs the intuition and the instinct. It needs the feeling, the sensation, the pricking and the receiving and all of those things in order to create that knowledge because it's inside us. Now, otherwise, we are separate and apart when we work just on the intellect. Now, those are my perceptions. In the, in the northern tradition, the intellect might, to a certain extent, be related to um, Huggin and Munin, the ravens who come and they go out into the world and then they receive, they, they whisper to Odin and Odin becomes the intellect then receiving all of these things from Huggin and Munin, from thoughts and, and memory and integrating them together. So it's very important, this power to understand, this important power to make meaning comes through with the intellect. But without Huggin and Munin and the like and the hammer and the spirit guides and the kin fetch and all of the different perceivings there it doesn't really it has no material it has no energy going into it so all of these different parts of the self come together so the questions that i would ask you maybe to consider whether or not we are covering your runes today with your own runes and with your um using this energy of the waxing moon of um of insight coming in and our ability to draw in energy is 
have a little play for yourself with how do you define intuition and how do you define instinct are they the same for you are they different for you because this is important this is an important part of bringing the conscious mind's attention to the power that we have access to when you start to unpack it a little bit and say hmm, this is what it means to me and questions for you to consider would be when have I trusted my instinct or my intuition and what was the impact of that? When have I trusted my instinct or in my intuition? And what was the impact of that? And you could also ask the question, when have I not trusted my instinct or my intuition? And what was the impact of that? Just do a little bit of a review. It's my invitation to you through the course of this week. Maybe do a little bit of journaling on that. Um, speak to a buddy about that. Um, you know, bring that into your thinking through this week. And if you're like, well, Maybe I don't trust them as much, or maybe I trust them too much. Now, either could, either could be the case. This is a place for play, for sacred play with using your instinct and your intuition. And one of my top tips is um, in starting to work with your instinct and your intuition, because I work with a lot of people one-to-one, -one and they sort of say, well, you know, I, I feel a bit silly saying, oh, I just know it. You know, that's not accepted. It's not acceptable words in, in our society. And I think that that is true. And so you want to start to use phrasing like, oh, you know, as you're saying, as you're saying this, I'm feeling a little bit of like tightness in my chest. This is what I sometimes say to clients, you know, they're saying something to me and they'll say, you know, I can, I'm receiving your words, but I'm also experiencing like, some tightness in my chest, um, just a little bit of fluttering in my heart there. Um, what's happening for you? And then often my clients will say, oh, you know what, I'm actually really stressed. You're absolutely right. I didn't realise that that was the case. But I'm not saying to them, you're stressed. No. I'm inviting them in to, I'm saying, this is what I'm feeling. That's my intuition or my instinct is telling me that my client might be bringing something to, you know, to the table. But actually, are we going to be able to work on that at all if they're in a space where they're feeling a lot of stress and then we might do a meditation or we might bring something down. So it's looking at how can you feel your instinct or, or your intuition and then frame as an invitation to the moment, you know, to a person or to a group, what's present for you? What's present for me right now is this. What's present for you? It's a great way of starting to play with your instinct and, and your intuition a little bit there. Let's have a look at what runes people have got and what you have said. Right, so Michelle, you have got Ingus, Lauren, you've got Hargalas and Thurisas. We're working with Hargalas today. And to take on old challenges and old wounds with Norfis. Oh, you're going for it there, aren't you? There's some powerful fruit runes that you're working with there. And Lisa, you've got Kinaz. And again, you might want to think about the way in which um, the two sides of the Kinaz rune can be drawn out through working with Ewaz and Manaz. It's integrating both that receiving um, insight, like that torch, I'm the torch bearer, I'm, looking, I'm a seeker of knowledge. You know, that's what Keen is, I'm the seeker of knowledge, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. And on the other side, I'm a creator. I'm a creator of great things. How do those things work together and how do they partner for you in the moment? Sue, you have got Northers. That's coming up, and Northers is a really powerful rune to work with. We're not covering it this week, but it's a really powerful rune to work with for instinct. Um, and intuition as well, but it is, there's a lot of animal bodily instinct that's present in North so it can really help us access that. And you're saying, I have my runes, the leather ones pinned up on my board with my year and season runes for the nine months from the nine mothers reading. Oh, I love that, I love that. It's the nine mothers reading that we did in the hearth space for those of you who don't know, um, earlier in the year, it's a full year reading and I, I really enjoyed it. I'm still, yeah, absolutely have mine up as well there, Sue. Um, we've already seen that Chen, you've got Ensus. Chen says, I wish we had this kind of leader in the world. Yes, so do I. That's the mission, Chen. That's the mission. Maggie says, you are working with Perthro. So we've got some really lovely, playful energy there. So, you know, I was talking about play. That's a really um, powerful space for you there. And Shannon has got um, Theu and Thurisaz. Ooh, I'm liking them as well. The wolf in the woods. What is on the periphery waiting to come back in? What wealth, abundance, what has been, <sighs> is being called and saying, yeah, I want to come back in. 
look from the wild places. That's what I'm feeling for you. So I've mentioned Airways. Airways is very much about the practice of giving and seeding control of leading and surrendering, leading and surrendering, that re ability to collaborate at a very profound level, which is why if you have another rune, you can say, well, how does Ewaz help me to access that rune? If you have Ewaz itself, then you're going to be wanting to play in that realm of instinct and intuition and intellect and really allowing yourself to explore that place. Then we have um, the rune, that I, I drew. I basically I draw the runes ahead of time now. I go, oh, we know which runes want to come. So Uru's was the next rune that wanted to come. If you think about the instinct present within the aurochs, which is what the Uru's rune represents, it represents this incredibly powerful um, creature, the ancestor to modern cattle that was hunted to extinction. And this rune is actually asking us some really important questions here about um, survival because you know as prey um, as prey as predatory animals and you know, I mentioned that you know we as human beings we are predatory animals we have eyes facing front but we are certainly getting to a point as a species where we are taking more of the resource from our planet than is sustainable and the question that the Uru's rune is asking us is are we able to partner our instinct our instinct it our instinct our instinct to survive our instinct to hunt our instinct to be the predatory animal with our intellect that tells us we can't keep going this way it's not sustainable and with our and our intuition which says that we have been given such immense blessings through our spiritual connection to you know however you think about the intelligence of the universe the intelligence of the divine however you think about that we have access to that and urus is asking that question so it's asking very much it's saying what do your instincts tell you and how do you balance those with your intellect and your intuition so it's about celebrating yourself as an instinctive animal not trying to push that down but recognizing again it's about that partnership that partnership between with the Ewa's rune and the manas rune so you might want to look at just at like everyday activities around um what feels right holding boundaries you now i'm thinking about like food relationships with food for example you know what we eat what we don't eat choices around being vegetarian not being vegetarian choices about recycling not recycling all of these things are coming through and it's just saying you know bring awareness to that with your uru's rune to becoming a <clears throat> sustainable human want of a better word uh what's the next evolution of the human species going to look like you know if you want to really go into it is what the uru is, is asking for you know it's, it's asking for how are you going to evolve um individually and collectively and with that we then have the rune that came next was the tewas rune which is asking similar questions in some way tewas is the rune if you think about it as being the god tier here <coughs> This idea of sacrifice, of being able to stand in your sovereignty, even if you have no land over which to rule. You can still be in a place of sovereignty, is what Tia says um, with his with his Tewa's rune. It's very much about my path is my path. Somebody else may choose that path. And that's okay. Or maybe it's not okay. What is it that my heart tells me? It asks us to take action from a place of integrity, from a place of deep integrity. Um, intelligence in action is the way I think about the Tewa's rune. It's that point when you are asked a really, you know, these moments when we have to make decisions that are really difficult. And it is from the Tewa's rune that we want to act, that we want to move forward the arrow in flight so if the uru's rune is asking us about what does it mean to be a sustainable human the tewa's rune is saying what actions can you take 
from that place? What action can you take now? What action can you take today? Is what you are um, doing coming from a place of fear or shadow or, or worry? Um, or is it coming from a place of hope and faith and possibility? And this is important for both of these rooms. This is important, again, if we think about the um, partnership between instinct, instinct and intuition. And this is why instinct is a faculty of intuition. Because there are times when our instincts might be saying, I'm not okay, I'm not okay. You know, and times when, you know, I struggle, let's say, with my biome a little bit. My biome says, I'm hungry. <laughs> my body says, I'm not really hungry. And the Tewa's room says, you know, bring in all of those those pieces. As as sustainable humans, as evolved humans, we have to be able to curb some of the instincts that we have relied on as a species for our entire history. You know? And use our intuition and our intelligence to balance that out. So the Uru's room and the Tewa's room, they're really working together and there's some key messages that are coming through. And then the Algis rune came up, and again, it was that um, that sense of the divine, the sense of the divine blessing coming through. So we've got the Algis rune here, which is the rune of protection, the rune of protection, and the rune of the of the gods. And it's sort of it was almost like these runes came, and they were asking, they were offering me answers to questions that I didn't even know I was asking at this point. And it's saying, yeah, when you are struggling, when the instinct is um, kicking in and saying, I want to look after my my house, my country, you know, this is my car, my, 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 you know, we are being, our instincts teach us to do that. They teach us to create places that are ours and that are safe so that we can feel like I've got my own kingdom. This is my kingdom and it's safe. Tia is a perfect example of saying, actually, sometimes the mission is more important than my desire to rule. You know, so he sacrificed his kingship for something that was greater than that. And that is what these runes are asking us to feel into and to recognise. And it's saying that sometimes when we feel like it's too much for ourselves, that's when we call on gods, our spirit guides, something outside. And it says, we've got your back. We've got your back. We support you. So through this week, if there's times when it feels a little bit tough, it's sort of saying, send me a sign, send me a, a thing. You know, I know that in my darkest moments send me a sign, send me a thing. In the darkest moment I ever had, I was just like, I just can't, I just can't. And I walked around the corner and there was a double rainbow over my house, you know? I thought, well, if I don't take that as a sign, I don't know what's wrong with me. And Algus is, you know, this rainbow energy, this rune of the, um, the rainbow bridge, literally, that connects us to the realm of, of the gods. So it's saying, you know, you know, you're not alone. You're not alone in this. You sustainable humans. No, we want you to survive. So then the next room that came out, I was a bit thrown by it originally. I was like, oh, it's interesting. It seemed a little bit off piece. It was the Rado room. Have I got my Rado in here? We go. Rado, rune of rhythm and ritual. And it's almost to me, it was talking about what rituals allow you to open fully to your spiritual intelligence. So you might think about this in terms of, again, you know, what do I, so I, I'm trying, I'm working really hard, I'm working with my birth runes actually at the moment to create a short ritual that I perform every morning to honour my four hero maker birth runes. So I'm doing, I have my, my shower with lagos, which I always do anyway, that's been there for ages, it's my sun rune. I'm doing um, my exercises with urus immediately afterwards now, I sort of um, chant or breathe urus while I'm doing my exercises and I bring in that um, embodied physicality of urus. Um, then I make my cup of tea and I go on a walk. I walk part way with my family and then I head off as they go off to school, if I'm not doing the school run. I've got my cup of tea. So I've got my radar rune, which is the, the walk, the rhythm, and there's a ritual as well I'm honouring with my radar rune, which is my first thread. And the Ewa's rune, which is that, you know, my time spent with my family, talking to them, having the cup of tea, and then I come home and I do my, do my journaling and my writing um, then from that place. And that brings in my Ewa's rune of bringing in all the different parts of me. So this is what the radar rune is asking. If you have your, if you have the radar rune, it's saying, how do you make space for all of these different parts of you? Obviously, for me, I use my birth runes because I know my birth runes and they, they just deeply connect me with my soul essence. 
but you could also look at it as my instinctive self, my intuitive self, and how do I bring these things forward? So work with the radio rune on that front. And the final rune that came through for um, today was the Hargalaz rune. I was a bit like, oh, the Hargalaz rune. After all these lovely ones, it's saying doom, destruction, you know. No. So here we have the hail seed, the Hargalaz rune. And I was feeling into this, and I was going, oh, you know, it just feels like, I can see Maggie, you've got the Perthro rune, and obviously we're in a period of deep Perthro energy at the moment. From 2020, we started this deep um, period of Perthro energy. And this sense of change and karmic force coming and saying the consequences of, you know, um, manimal, you know, living the way we live is, that are coming through quite strongly at the moment. And I can feel that Hargalaz energy of the planet saying, you know, I will write myself, you know, whatever you do, that's not going to impact on the planet or the solar system or the universe. It's going to impact on you and the species who are your collaborators and your partners, you know, some of whom, like the Aurochs, are already extinct. And so I was feeling a bit down about that. And then the Hargalas said, no, no, you're, 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 you're missing the point. It said, balance and order and pattern are inherent in nature. They are inherent in nature. They are, they are there. And therefore, they must be inherent in you. Simply must. And so it's this message by, from the Hargalaz during the end saying, it might seem difficult to balance all these different pieces and to write to all of the things that are challenging at the moment and to create a more sustainable collaborative partnership with our planet and our peoples and the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. But the Hargalaz rune says, you know, all of these, all of the, everything that feels hard is for a worthwhile cause. And you have the answers within you and between you. No, it's, um, it's what it said, which is, made me feel good. Uh, that made me feel good. It reminded me that one of my business values is collective wisdom. My belief that the answers to the most challenging problems lie in the spaces between us. So get collaborating people, get sharing, um, share what your runes are. I'm really looking forward to meeting lots of you at the Healing for the Runes workshop, which I am doing on Wednesday evening. Um, I've just extended the number of places available because it um, it became full. So we had to look at it and say, okay, can we um, can I accommodate more people, which I can. So there are now some more tickets available. That sense of claiming wholeness, that sense of working in partnership with our, with our rooms, with these energies of consciousness that are available to us as people of Northern European heritage, as people who speak the Germanic languages, as people who have simply been called to walk these paths, they, you know, I believe that's one of the reasons that they have come forward and why the Northern tradition is uh, resurging so strongly at this point is because it is a tradition that speaks to the heroic within us. It says you are able to rise to this challenge, you're able to do that. So come and have some healing on Wednesday. And for those of you who are in the hearth space or are planning to join the hearth space for our next month of work, we have just completed our, our month of work with the goddess Hela. Um, your final um, discussion session is going to be published either today or tomorrow there. So all of those resources will be there if you want to recap over our work with Hela on cruelty and compassion. And we are opening a new month of work coming up with the goddess Ran, who is the goddess of the deep sea. And her theme is enchantment and illusion. So what will enchantment and illusion have to teach us? So with that, have a wonderful week ahead. Enjoy working with your runes, enjoy harnessing this energy of balance as we get to the, the half moon of partnership, of collaboration, of feeling into um, instinct and intuition and as claiming those as part of what it means to be a, a spiritual human and uh, chances I love sustainable human. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's all be sustainable humans together. Thank you, Lauren. I will look to have a great week. You too. Lovely to see you, Michelle. Blessings to all of you and see you very soon.